We're talking Mark Jewelers. We're talking actually Mark Jeweler variants because Mark Jeweler comics have just been like normal comics for such a long time. But really, these have become a collectible item in themselves. And now we call them variants. Context for those of you who have never seen Mark Jeweler is because they are um, hard to come by. This is my absolute favorite Mark Jeweler ever because it's purple, my favorite color. But this is what a Mark Jeweler looks like. It is in the center of the comic book and it's basically a jewelry um, advertisement where the military could take that pick their jewelry for their ladies and mail it back in and it goes to them that's right simple as that (laughs) back in like 1970 ish right around there you know some places different sites say it's different things but particularly in the 70s that started in this company, Mark Jewelers, which, by the way, is no longer a company. I know. I looked. I purchased the domain. I digress. This particular company (laughs) thought it would be a good idea to market to a target demographic that happened to fall within the comic book demographic, largely males between 18, 25 years old. And there's a lot of military personnel who are purchasing Mm -hmm. comic books, specifically around bases and nearby military areas. And what would happen is upwards of 5% of the run would get this four page, you know, front and back two pages ad from the company. And some things that you would find in there are like class rings, for example. You know, if someone just got out of high school, they're going to go serve our country. And they want to be, you know, the the jewelry company thought, hey, let's do some class rings. But what about the sweethearts, right? You know, what about the the people at home? You know, the, the, the gals, some people were just getting married. Some were looking to propose. So you would get all these types of jewelry within these. And it's pretty fun, isn't it? I mean, you're looking at one. What kind of stuff are you looking at there? So you can see the guys rings here. In the blue, that beautiful baby blue. I mention the color so much because Mark Jewelers are in different colors. They've got like black, dark blue, red, gorgeous purple, back to the wedding rings, wedding bands. And like Tom was saying, like a lot of them do too have like the class rings and stuff. So you basically pick out your jewelry, fill out your order form. And um, here's the back of it too. There you go. Just like right in the center. So... Tell me what this particular example, which is actually a pretty cool uh, X-Men key. um, What is that paper quality like the actual ad itself? I'm curious. It's really thick. I'll show you guys again. It's not the same as like the interior pages. So like, you know, your interior pages are going to be like kind of like that newspaper you feel. But the Mark Jeweler itself is like a a little bit lighter than cardstock, but it is thicker it does have a gloss, like a high gloss to it. And actually when you're hunting, because I actually get asked this a lot, like how do I find a Mark Jeweler? Because I just want at least one. And I'm like, well, it takes some time <laughs> looking down on all the comics. You'll see like a really thick colored line in the middle. Um, of course, you guys won't be able to see it on screen. Um But like right down the center, if you're looking down while you're hunting, you can see like a thick band that's like really dark in the middle of the comic Um, because that paper is so thick. You can actually see it before opening it as well. Absolutely. You know, my experience, my experience with Mark Jewelers dates back quite a ways because I knew that these were special back then. I think I was instructed by one of my mentors at the time, and it was akin to the newsstand. Which, by the way, can you show that comic that you just had in your hand and show me the barcode? Oh, yeah, absolutely. This right here is a barcode akin to a newsstand. These comics are newsstands indeed. They just have a whole extra layer of extra stuff inside. And that right there is what makes them hyper collectible. And scarcity is the main thing. High grade is the next thing. But... Also, something to note is that some key comics made their way to these bases and found themselves with a Mark Jewelers, but other comics didn't, which is interesting because I have experienced working with other buyers, collectors of Mark Jewelers in the last decade, some of which 
are in other countries. A lot of these members serve the military, so they're all over the world. I had someone in Australia exclusively awesome. looking for Mark Jeweler G.I. Joe comic books, you know, others that were looking for Werewolf by Night specific. And the things that they told me was, I'm looking for this list of Mark Jewelers, and I get these lists from different individuals. And it's always fun getting uh, collector's lists. And on this list, multiple of them, there would be highlights of, I know this exists and this is approximately what I would expect it to go for. But some of them were highlighted like, I don't know if it exists because not every comic book got this ad. Not every comic book was brought to newsstand to be sold in this way. So some mm-hmm. may or may not exist. And when they pop up, if a collector is looking for them, they'll pay an inflated amount. How much? Mm-hmm. Well, let's actually show them. Um, comic fam, hit that like, slap the subscribe. That's why we're here. I got some various sales, recent sales that have happened over on eBay. So Sammy, what I'm looking at right now is an amazing Spider-Man 346. We have a Venom cover, Eric Larson goodness, and this has a Mark Jeweler on the inside. What you're going to see here is that a 9.4 graded copy went for $500. All right. Why? Why would this see such an inflated amount? Well, it's because of the grade. It's because of the scarcity. Mm -hmm. But how much more is this worth? Well, let's take a look at what this book actually goes for over on GPA in the same grade. So GPA hasn't even caught up to some of the recent sales. So this book just sold, and I just told you how much it was for. It was for $500. GPA 9.4 shows $86 $86 for a 9.4 in the same grade non-Mark jeweler. So wow. does it just stop there? No, because here's another example. Right now, Comic Fam, for our audio listeners available on SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes, we have DC Comics Presents Issue 26. We have the new Teen Titans. We have a 9.2 Mark jeweler that sold in September for $750 on auction. Let's take a look at the GPA. Oh my gosh. Right. It's a cool book. I actually really like it. Oh, it is. I have a couple. I love it. 9.2 on GPA. We're looking at a $500 sale, upwards of $200 plus more expensive for a Mark Jeweler versus a standard 9.2 copy. And I found another one for you because it doesn't just stop there. Let's take a look at New Mutants 98. This book in a Mark Jewelers has been hot. Oh, wowza. First appearance of Deadpool. Deadpool right here, 9.4. Notice all of these have a barcode because all of them are technically mm-hmm. newsstands. $2,000 for a CGC 9.4. We have a recent sale as of November for $565. An inflation that is incredible. And what yeah. do we know, Sammy, about newsstands as it pertains to price worth when the barcode is present? It's all dependent on what? Oh, yeah, the how good the condition is. And what we're looking at are 90s and 92s that are seeing inflation. Absolutely. And one thing that's like super interesting about the Mark Jeweler and just like putting my own like kind of experience on it, um, not with particularly Mark Jewelers, but like Tony, my husband being in the military, is jewelry is such a popular gift when they're deployed and they're away. Every time he's gone, he always gets me jewelry every single time. So it makes me think of these Mark Jewelers like, yeah, we may know that a book got printed in a Mark Jeweler, but how many still have the Mark Jeweler? I mean, obviously, a lot of these got used. Absolutely. Mailed in for the jewelry. It's like... Uh, They were incented to take it out just like the coupons in the back of the book, you know, the Marvel value stamps, for example. But it's like a whole different notch because this is literally an ad. You know, some people are going to cut out that coupon. But if you're on a if you're like serving the military, are you real? You know, I I can't imagine why members wouldn't do those types of things, go out of their way to cut, get, you know, cut out around those dotted lines. Like I can see why people wouldn't do that, but they still did. And over here, we have an ad that was literally placed in after the fact, you know, after it was printed that is meant to be utilized. And they did. So we're talking 5% of the print run already newsstands. Actually, let's back it up. We're talking about newsstand comics. All right. And that in itself, check the last video, means that this percentage is quite small, especially in high grade. But then they made their ways to these military bases, stores that are nearby. And then they have an ad on the inside that was largely picked out cut out. So we're talking about grades that are 
seeing an inflation beyond what you would expect a newsstand to see, because that's how exciting these books are. And believe it or not, it was really a very small subcategory of collectors that even cared about these for quite a long time. We've only begun to see the Mark Jeweler craze, I would say, in the last four years alone. So, Ooh, mic drop. <laughs> starting the auction off at $1 for one minute, like we always do. This is one of our favorite covers, and you got it. A little bit of that, what y'all been looking for, right? A little bit of that, for what y'all been looking for, right? 